I think we came within a hair's breadth of a second civil war in this country, and we avoided it. And I think it's because God intervened. And I believe that he has given us a chance to answer his call. Amen. And I think that's the moment we live in right now is the hard part is we are in a kind of war in this country. But the enemy is not our fellow citizens. No. Actually. It is an ideology. That's right. And so this is the work we have cut out ahead of us is how do we win this war while still viewing our neighbors as our fellow citizens and not as our enemy combatants? Are we up to that challenge? Hey there, my name is Devore Darkens. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing the reaction from Vivek Ramaswamy on JD's Vance announcement as the new uh, vice president running mate for uh, Donald Trump. Also, some exciting news for his future, possibly. And uh, a couple of other uh, takes I want to get that was pretty insightful about his relationship with JD Vance. But before we get into that, you guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. Play the video. J.D. Vance is going to be an outstanding vice president. Here's why. I've known him for a long time. I've known him for a long time. So I don't say this as somebody who you recently met in the context of American politics. I've known him for over a decade. We were law school classmates, actually. We used to watch Cincinnati Bengals games together. That's how we knew each other more. We didn't even know we were among the few lone conservatives at Yale Law School. He is somebody who has not only lived the American dream, like in a real way, but actually cares about serving the public, which I know sounds like a pretty basic attribute for a public servant, but actually he's one of the few who is in it for the right reasons. He has a clear ideology. He's intelligent. We, even when we do have differences of opinion in certain areas, actually we have some of our best conversations around that. And he's around one, I'm sorry, that mean what? areas of, you know, where we might have slight. Yeah. I, we already know Vivek is amazing at articulating himself and I was one of those people, one of the, the conservatives that I wanted to really see him become the vice president. But listen, they know more than <laughs> they know what they're doing. Right. They probably have access to information. I don't. Um, but either way, uh, what's pretty cool about Vivek and uh, J.D. is that J.D.'s wife is Indian, by the way, and J.D.'s youngest son, his name is Vivek as well. So they're they're definitely close you know i didn't know they were that close i didn't know they had that type of history and sometimes you kind of find these things out after the fact right but i thought that was pretty insightful and um hopefully vivek um will be used by president trump in some way shape or form within the government or potentially what was brought up in this clip our passion is taking on the regulatory state. I think that's a nonpartisan issue that's actually impeding our economy, in some ways even threatens the American model of self-governance. I think that administrative state is far too big. There are ways to address that from the executive branch. There are also things that need to be done from Congress and the Senate, too. So I look forward to those conversations Here it comes right after now. President Trump is successfully reelected. Re Here it comes right now, so you can cut everything before that. I'll ask because I've got to check the box. Has okay. anybody reached out to you from Governor DeWine's office to broach this issue yet? I have not discussed this with Governor DeWine. Anybody from his office? I, I haven't discussed it with President DeWine. I haven't d discussed it with Governor DeWine. But, you know, I look, forward to, I look forward to evaluating what the future holds in store. I would strongly consider it if asked, but I think there are a lot of other ways to serve this country. And, you know, this isn't about what comes after victory. This is about what our path is to victory in November. To that point, and then I'll, I'll move on, but I want to ask you, talk about the ways that you think you can serve former President Trump. Chief of Staff in the White House, is that something that has been uh, brought up to you as a possible role? We've talked about a lot of different possibilities Who's from the cabinet. And President Trump and I have had, I mean, we talk regularly. I spoke to him, actually most recently, it was after midnight on the night that he suffered that injury, that tragedy, and the assassination attempt on Saturday night. One of the things I admire about him is he's always strong, he's always energetic. And I think we get along and we want to save the country together, but that's going to come in a lot of different forms. So we've talked about different ideas, potentially in a cabinet to other ways of driving change. And, you know, today, I think adds one more development that'll give us a lot to consider. Yeah, there's so many ways that uh, Vivek could be used, right? He could definitely be used as chief of staff. I mean, he could be the press secretary as well. I mean, probably that might be the lowest position for him, but he'd be really good at dealing with the media, of course. And I think that's where his... Um, his strengths, 
need it needs to be used is interfacing with the media in some way, shape, or form. Now, is that the senator in Ohio to replace J.D. Vance? Is that uh, chief of staff? Is that a you know secretary of fill in the blank? You know, we don't know what that is, but I really do hope that even though he wasn't selected as the VP, that he will be used. He's part of the young generation. He's just a similar age as J.D. Vance. He's got to be used in some way, shape, or form, just like Byron Donalds, young as well. Use the younger, up-and-coming conservatives in politics. Get fresh ideas, fresh way of looking things. And that's why I do support the J.D. Vance pick, only because he brings uh, younger experience. And I think that is healthy because we've seen what happens like someone as of Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden, who spend so much time in politics, they never tell the truth about anything whatsoever, and they never change, right? They keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, and the results never change for hardworking Americans. So I really do love the uh, pick, and hopefully, you know, Vivek is used in some way, shape, or form by the president. The party of national unity. That's who we are. Not some fake artificial unity, but the real thing. And the real thing means we're not going to agree with our opponents on everything. But we will still respect their right to say it as we expect in return. That's the America we know, where we can disagree vehemently at the dinner table, but still have dinner at the end of it. That's the America I miss. That is the America that I think so many of us miss in this country. And we can criticize the left until we're blue in the face, because there's a lot of criticism to go around. But we're not going to save this country that way. I think the way we're going to save this country is actually by reviving who we are and what we stand for as Republicans and as Americans. Individual, family, nation, and God beat race, gender, sexuality, and climate. Every you know, this, again, this is why we love him, because he's just spitting facts. And this has always been in my mind. Um, and I've seen it in my own life on the individual level. These principles are are the same, meaning are you going to look at your circumstances and blame people on the outside? Are you going to blame the government? Are you going to blame the color of your skin? Are you going to blame your parents? Or are you going to look in the mirror and take responsibility, right? Be accountable and then start to shift your beliefs to the timeless principles that have always worked since the beginning of time your relationship with God, right? Your faith with God, right? Or whatever religion you practice, you got to have some level of faith, right? Your family, like what? You got to be a part of something that's bigger than you. And family always does that, especially when you are tasked with raising the next generation of leaders. Big, big, big deal. And then just your purpose, meaning the, the service of others, right? This is why you're here to serve others and help them succeed in their life. And you do that by using the gifts and talents that God has given you. But sometimes in our country, we spend too much time focusing on what has happened instead of focusing on where am I at right now? What's really most important right now? And what am I going to start doing to move in the right direction? Not just on an individual level, but with my family, with my community. What am I doing to be a part of that movement, that solution. And that's why I really love when he speaks. I mean, he, he always delivers facts, of course. And I really do hope, like I've said already, that he's used some way or shape or form in the government, um, or if even if he isn't, that he continues to speak, share his message, because more and more people, I believe, relate to his message because it's not political. It's just facts. It's timeless principles, right? Our country, our faith, our family, our freedom, you know, all of these things have been here since the beginning of the Constitution, and it will still be here. So let's put our focus on things like that and not on gender and DEI and, you know, systematic racism and oppression and and all of these things that are actually inhibiting our growth as a country. Because think about it. The problem with the left mindset, OK, is this. It comes from a place of fear, scarcity, and lack. It comes from a place that, hey, because you are black, you are less than, right? This is why they do quotas, right? This is why Disney has, Disney has completely fallen off because 
that's the way they see their production. Their creativity is limited because what supersedes creativity now is the color of someone's skin, right? Or their background. That's more important than the actual movie itself. And so what happens is the, the results show that people are not aligning with that. It just doesn't work because the energy is off. And that's the problem with the left is the energy is off about how they're choosing to improve this country in their own way. And he said it best. They're allowed to have their own opinions. They're allowed to believe that, hey, we should do it this way, because ultimately, I do believe peop some people on the left have good intentions. They want to better this country. It's just their way of going about it, I believe, doesn't work because that's what the results have shown. And when you're coming from a place of fear, scarcity, and lack, and insecurity, it doesn't work. And that's the difference between really the left and, and the right. And I believe as conservatives, we are coming from a place of not fear, scarcity, lack. We're coming from a place of faith, right? Our religion, our, our spiritual practice, our purpose here in life, self-accountability, right? Supporting others, but also holding each other accountable. That's how we get better. Right. And it starts on the inside. So, you know, th this is a conversation that's always going to continue to go back and forth. But this is my mindset on it. I want to hear what yours is. What do you think about his reaction? What his future plans may be? What do you what do you think he should end up? What, how do you think um, Donald Trump should use him in his cabinet or should he be outside the government? I want to hear what your thoughts are and more in the comment section below. And thank you so much for checking out the video today. And I'll see you in the next one.